Last episode, we set the table on some huge upgrades, unlocking our first tier 75 weapon and completing Desert Treasure. But now it's time to step things up a notch. I want to complete the Fight Kiln in this video, starting off with basically the lowest stats you can have for it. The Elder Kiln quest requires 60 agility and 75 magic, so why don't we start things off by AFKing 75 magic at Desert Bandits. After many hours of AFK trading here, that is level 75 magic, probably the single biggest power spike we are going to encounter. Also, really quickly, peep the herb tab. Look at all the herbage we have. It's nuts. It's actually nuts. I think I have 500 herbs in here, something like that. Now that I'm level 75 magic, that is a requirement for Wagathic Sleeps and Nomad's Requiem and the Elder Kiln. But most importantly, I can now wield the tier 75 Vanquish. So my accuracy just went from 1100 to 1694 and my damage scaled up too. Now that we've got 75 magic, we can finally start getting in to some PVM. One thing that we've struggled with as a group thus far is money. In RuneScape, having GP is really important because every day in an ideal world, you're spending about a million coins on shop runs around Gilinor, and at this stage, we're all basically broke. But now that I've got a tier 75 and the rest of the group is a little higher level, we're gonna try out one of the best early game money makers there is, Five Mechanic Archglacer. If we can get decent kills at this boss, we're gonna be absolutely rolling in money. So I'm going to swap onto the normal spell book so that we can use vulnerability, buff my teammates a little bit, give them some extra damage. I love that you've got more HP than me, even though I'm 63. What's your, what's your hit points level? 44. 44? <laughs> Bro, yeah. necromancy is so stupid. That's insane. <laughs> this is a terrible <laughs> idea. Being able to do normal mode Archglacer is a pretty big deal because we're now able to get the scripture of when, if we're lucky. It's an absolutely sick god book that we can put in our pocket slot, and it will help us absolutely crush through the early game, because whenever it activates, it's gonna spawn a massive laser beam on top of our target and deal a ton of damage. In addition, the Archglacer is the single best charm dropper in the entire game, and we're gonna need charms in order to train summoning, which is gonna be awesome later on. And like everything else in the Elder God Wars dungeon, the GP rates from the common drops at this boss are absolutely ridiculous, and we're gonna make millions of gold every single hour we do this boss. We're only gonna hit 200s when we pray correctly. Yeah, we're, we're barely taking any damage. One of the mechanics of normal mode Archglacer is this beam attack. <gasps> no! The beam is gonna hit you 10,000 magic damage and you're meant to use the resonance ability to counter on it so that you heal from it instead of being hit. But instead of doing that, if you use the reflect ability first, when you resonance it, it's gonna heal you to full and it's also gonna reflect back an absolutely crazy amount of damage. If you do this with three people at the same time, you get this. This one's gonna be big. Oh yeah. Someone got a 13k there. So yeah, that's an awesome combo. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> I can't help with this part. Actually, I don't know if we got this. This could be, actually Guys? the could be really tough. No, I'm, I can't help. I'm actually gonna die. No, keep oh, damaging. No. It's on 3k, please guys. No, Pup survived because of devotion. Pup survived? We are so back. We're okay, back, baby. Game. Okay, we're fine. Sorry, Big Pup. This is why we call him Big Pup, by the way. We're already halfway through, so like we're, just, we're actually- We're chilling. actually already halfway through? <laughs> yeah, Maniacal is actually screwing me over, but I'm hitting like a truck. It's actually four man with the skeleton, true? Oh, 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 okay. oh careful. <laughs> we got hit. Oh no. Oh, we're gonna... oh no. It's fine. Oh, we got it. What do we get? We got a, a PR. PR? I got, I got remnants. I got 268k coins? <laughs> yeah, this boss is insane. Oh my gosh. I yeah, just yeah. doubled my cash stack. Big PR. <laughs> Look at all the pop-ups. I got remnants, so lucky. Wait, Pop 260k coins. again. And the Baynite Spirits, actually pretty good, because we're not going to have very many other sources of those. What was the kill on there? Three minutes? Yeah. Surely if we can do this, I can do a fight kill. Surely. Oh yeah, with tier 75, you can do a fight kill. What do we got? Battle staffs, water battle staffs. Ooh, let's go! It's 170k worth of elks right there. I wish dungeoneering rules applied in group Iron Man, so I could just use a food on you. That would actually be really funny. I will be recommending that. You see that little diagonal surge? That's what I could do for the company. Water oh, talismans, cow. crystal keys. Okay, that's not super useful for right now. The charm's really good though. Any drops? Crystal keys. Ew, not a great loot, unfortunately. Do we win? A PR Dominic and focus. oh, somebody focus. Okay, that's not a superbly good drop, but that's okay. A yeah, three minute kill for a boss with an average loot of like half a mil this early is not. It's literally like two quest point shop dies every three minutes. Now, <laughs> wait, who oh, did we lose? We lost Pup. 
No! I wanted to see the hit slot, so I scrolled all the way up and it absolutely flashbanged me. Any drops? What do we get? We got Onyx Dust. Can you elk Onyx Dust? 10k a piece. Okay, yeah. so we've made we've made a couple mil already. Mom, oh, he's gonna die to reflect. Hit us, Ready? Hit us. Go big! Hey. Let's go, sub three! Right, salvage, 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 oh, salvage. salvage! Yes! 860k. <laughs> Ooh, 210k. I'll take it. 2.9 mil in alkables. Oh my god. So we made a total, pro we made 4 mil of, of raw GP in an hour. Now that we've got some money, it's time to get back to work on 60 agility. I'm back at the wilderness agility course, but this time around, I'm wearing the demonic skull, which is going to grant me extra experience when doing various wilderness activities. The only downside is that with it equipped, anyone at any combat level that sees me can attack me, and this thing is worth 550k, so there's a bounty on my head, and I need to be extremely sneaky here. Road to 60 agility, skulled in level 51 wilderness, starts whenever I can cross this stupid beam. That is level 58 agility coming in. Two more levels to go. Do you see this XP rate? 177k an hour. Now, I do have bonus XP from the Agaroth minigame. It's it's really, really good. I also have daily challenges I can hand in too, which I'm also gonna do. Bang. That is level 42 Herblor. Slightly less important, but also even more agility XP. We're gonna be done agility in, it's 28k XP, seven minutes. I actually think there's a real chance we spent half a mil on the Demonic Skull and we survive. That is 59 agility, and most importantly, nobody has managed to find me and murder me yet. Like, my biggest goal in life right now. Help! Get away! Oh god, that person has a fractured staff orbital. Wait, maybe they're friendly. Maybe they're friendly. They are not friendly. Are they gonna kill me? Okay, I'm gonna hop. That is 60 agility, which means we now have all the levels needed for the Elder Kiln, which is the prerequisite quest for the Fight Kiln. This is an absolutely ancient quest, by the way. I don't know why. This quest, I mean, it came out in 2012, so it's not even that old of a quest. This is one of the most dated feeling quests in, in the entire game. I think it's this part, actually. Fight Pit PK with the Range Cape and the Dark Bow. Otis Champ. This guy is sick, though. Fire Cape Soars is an absolute beauty. Whoa, this guy's got some life points. Holy... All right, we got enemies. Got a lot of enemies. All right, we're into the kiln. Let's get it. So this is the version of the kiln that is in the quest. And we've got to do seven waves of this. Okay, a little four, three aspect ratio cutscene. Okay, that is the elder kiln quest complete. We're now at 170 quest points. Good stuff. I'm now 61 agility, 76 magic. And then we've also got this lamp, 100k experience is kind of nuts to be honest. That is level 77 magic. 60 agility also unlocks the God Wars dungeon and we can kill Bando's followers in the main room for the sacrifice and devotion abilities. Sacrifice gives me a small heal when used and devotion will make my overhead prayers 100% effective for 10 seconds. They're both really nice abilities to have for anything that's endurance based. When you go into God Wars, it's best to have protection from the enemies of the factions you're standing by. So I'm also gonna do the horror from the deep quest so I can reclaim a damaged God book from Jossic. This is kind of an iconic quest. Okay, big day. We have a lighthouse. Holy, we're in the basement dimension. Level 100? Oh, but like super, super not scaled. <laughs> you never know with these quests. Oh, I didn't realize Dagonoth Mother was this quest. Wait, error and weakness. Got it. Easy. And that is the horror from the deep quest complete. Got myself 50 strength, 38 range. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, nice. So I can buy whatever I want. Awesome. That's actually really cool. So let's buy a damaged Bando's book. Why don't we go into God Wars for the very first time? I literally have every single wreck for Edgar's Ruse. Okay, you have my word. Next time we go to God Wars, I will do the Edgar's Ruse quest and then we can teleport. Do I need a rope? No. Tell me the knight has a rope. Oh my God, I'm dying. Oh, hold. Leave me alone. You're telling me there's no way to get a rope? Wait, I don't need a rope. He's ropeless. Welcome to the God Wars dungeon. I'm getting blasted by ADNZs. Okay. I don't remember being too long of a grind, by the way, to get uh, Sacrifice. It shouldn't be that bad, hopefully. I'm also really glad we got Bando's protection. If we hadn't, I think these guys would be absolutely clapping me right now. Um, ooh, War Priest of Bando's cape. It's a tier 50 cape that upgrades to tier 75. And it reduces your ability cooldowns. Okay, I actually think if I get War Priest, that's better than anything else that I could wear. If we get a three-piece set, that's unreal. Whoa, more War Priest. Wait. This is going really, really well. Yeah, I'm like, I'm genuinely gonna use this. It actually has, it has a really, really good set effect. We've, we've got sacrifice. Let's go. Okay, awesome. So now all we need is devotion and then we get out of here. Ooh, War Priest of Bando's top. Wait, that's actually really good. Okay, cool. Also, we've just unlocked 
the devotion ability. It's absolutely huge. Okay, so we can actually leave this place. Great talk. And transfigure back to back. Wait, as if we had to spend 45 minutes here and then the floodgates just opened. Fair enough, man. I'm getting out of here. That was extremely worth it. After getting sacrificed basically right away, it took us almost an hour to unlock devotion. But now I've got the abilities I need so we can get out of here. All right, that is a beautiful amulet of zealots, which is a 10% DPS increase. That's gonna be sick, actually. In order to do the fight kiln, you have to sacrifice a fire cape in one of the most insanely cool cutscenes in the game. But in order to sacrifice fire cape, well, I need a fire cape. So why don't we head into the fight caves and get that done? This is a good measuring stick for me, because if we're struggling to get a fire cape, the kiln cape is gonna be just about impossible. But either way, we're going for it. I'm in the cave, team. Oh, I'm 51 deaf. Okay, that's 52 defense and a rejuvenation station unlocked. Wait, I'm actually flying through this fire cape. I'm on wave 31. Wait, I just got a, a hard Karamja task done. Must have been hard. It was, it was hardly hard to be honest. I'm like really close to death. Okay, I'm just gonna eat food. <gasps> oh. oh no. Oh. No, I saved it, I saved it. I clutched, I clutched, I clutched. <laughs> <laughs> the rejuvenate. That's a rest moment. That's a throw on the rapid heal prayer. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. I'm not going to lie. I don't feel the best about this. Maybe kiln's off the table for today then. I think I can do it. I'm getting pretty good at one, uh, no prayer point flicking at least. Like I didn't lose any prayer points in that whole exchange. That's good. About halfway through the fight caves, I'm noticing a few problems. The first problem is I don't have a ton of prayer left, especially considering the later waves require a lot of prayer and a lot of upkeep. One thing I'm doing to try to mitigate this is when there's only one enemy attacking me and I need to use overhead prayers, you're actually able to flick it for one single game tick without losing prayer points. So we should be able to get a little bit of extra prayer out of that. But the second issue is food. In RuneScape 3, prayers are not 100% effective. So even if I'm hitting my prayer flicks, I'm losing HP and I'm now losing food as well. Especially on the waves where a ranger and a major attack me at the same time, it's just not going well at all. And I don't think I'm gonna make it to the end of the fight caves in this run unless I change things up a bit. But what if I never had to deal with that situation where there's a ranger and a mage attacking me at the same time? There's a piece of tech that's gonna allow me to set whatever spawn I want for the remainder of the fight caves. And even though it takes a lot of time, it should make the caves a lot easier. In RuneScape 3, the spawn order of each wave is randomized, so sometimes you'll get a bad spawn, and sometimes every monster will spawn separated, allowing you to pick them off one by one easily. When you click the logout button, the game is going to tell you that you'll be automatically logged out at the end of your current wave, without penalty. But if you hit it a second time, it'll log you out instantly with the punishment of having to repeat your current wave. Because of this, at the start of each wave, I can press the logout button once, and then I'll wait for the monsters to spawn in. If I like the spawn, I'll finish the wave as normal. But if I don't like the spawn, I'm going to quickly hit the logout button a second time before anything attacks me and puts me in the combat stance. And then when I log back in, I'll be able to repeat that same wave with a different spawn every time. This is going to allow me to continually reset a wave until I get the exact spawn that I want, which is going to make this a million times slower, but also a million times easier. So why don't we do that to get all the way up to Jad? Oh God, it's Jad time. Okay. I gotta, I gotta be dialed in. Don't spawn directly on my face challenge. Look out, here he comes. It's a little bit of a chonker too. Oh, okay. Don't get Jad hands. <laughs> What's Jad hands? <laughs> That's where your hands lock up when you're trying to pick your <laughs> what? what, Jad hands? So there's actually a one tick hit delay at Jad. So if you prayer flick, you have to leave your prayer on. See how I have to leave my prayer on way too long? See that? That is one thing about Jad where it's actually oh, yeah, it's really, like really easy to die. There's a hit delay on all of Jad's attacks. The only thing that can kill me now is if I run out of prayer. I don't know what I packed for this, but I packed the wrong stuff for this camping trip. Maybe I gotta hit him with the, the G-conk. And see you, idiot! I did it! Congratulations. My guy's dancing. I'm He's dancing. Big one. He did it, he did it. All right, it's melee type, so I'm not allowed to wear it. Unlucky. Wait, who just joined the, who just joined the bigger, call? Wait, bigger achievement. Sorry, wait, who just joined? Me. Bop. Who are you? Who? Oh! Bop from two days ago! Wait, what do you mean I from two days ago? Oh, what? I, remember I remember her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from two days ago. No, it was not 40 oh, hours. It was like two days. 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bop from, Bob from back in October. It was November 1st. It was November 1st. <laughs> Bop from last month. Before we head into the kiln, I'm going to want a summoning familiar. So let's politely ask everyone in the group to drop their charms into the group storage so that I can power level to 52 for the spirit terror bird. 
Before you go into the comments and call me the worst group mate in the world, I am going to refund every single charm I'm stealing. I'm just pretty tunneled on the fight kiln right now. Nobody else needs a familiar right this second. So I'm grabbing the charms. I'm going to use them. And then a little later on, I'll go farm up the charms I need to refund everybody in the group so that we all have the ability to use summoning. <laughs> That's level 24, 25, 26 summoning, 27, 28, 29. That's level 30 summoning, 31, 32. That's level 33. That's level 34 coming in level 35 level 37 level 38 level 39 41 i've got the bullet 42 44 that is level 45 summoning coming in 46 47 48 49 that's level 50 that is level 51 summoning coming in there are cryptid scarabs to crack open huh? i just got the deposit box all right i can stop doing that wait this is really good xp what is going on yeah, a bunch of scarabs just spawned yeah. and I just, I just clicked yeah. on them like one time you for one time. You can spam them. Now spam them. That's kind of nuts. Wait, this is really overpowered. I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing, but that was kind of fun. I got a bunch of Metaphos rep and I unlocked the fishing thing like just instantly. And that is level 52 summoning, which means we can now use the Spirit Terror Bird Familiar. And I can also buy a tier 2 aura reset. So we're going to buy that. And then that way, if my Vampirism Aura resets, we can actually refresh it. So that's actually perfect. Spirit Terror Birds only last for 12 minutes. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to fill up like a quarter of the Terror Bird with Terror Birds. Before people tell me about the legendary pet trick, I do not have Premier on this account. I do feel a little bad for stealing everybody on the team's charms. Okay. Let's get it, dude. Now it's time for the fight kiln. And this is my final setup. I've got some stat boosting potions, a wand and a shield for defensive abilities, and then I fill up the rest of my invent and beast of burden with heaps of food, prayer restorations, and backup terror birds because this thing is definitely going to take a lot of time. The one other item I have in my invent is a halberd as a melee weapon, which is required to take out some of the mobs inside the kiln. They have a protective shell that needs to be broken. The fight kill is 37 waves, with the first 10 being ranged based, 11 to 20 being magic based, 21 to 30 being melee based, and then after wave 31, all bets are off and things get crazy, including a wave with two jads. If I can get through all of those waves, we then have to deal with the final boss, whose name is Harakin. With that said, let's begin. Say goodbye to the beautiful fire cape that we literally just spent an hour and a bit getting. Ready? Give him the fire cape, and then he just, boom, gone. So now we have no choice but to get something better. Oh my god, I got no damage, dude. Help me! So on wave two drop, that's where the invulnerability crystal spawns. So we need to go in and grab that. Every two waves in the fight kiln, a crystal is going to spawn on the floor. A lot of them are useless, but I wanted to take you through the more important ones and what they do. The red restoration crystal is going to instantly restore my life points and my prayer all the way to full whenever I click on it. The cyan invulnerability crystal is going to make me immune to all damage for 30 seconds. And last but not least, the purple constitution crystal is going to temporarily give me an extra 50% life points. So basically, I'm going to look like I'm wearing necromancy gear for about three minutes. So meant to drop a food, grab the crystal. Oh, this is actually the wrong rock. As long as I kill this guy quickly, it's kind of fine. Am I on the wrong side of the room? I don't think I am. Oh my god. Okay, well that's terrible. Yeah, I can start next wave southeast, because that's where the most spawns are anyway. The double spawn is southeast. Yeah, the one good thing is my prayer is solid. The first 20 waves are the hardest part, and I don't mind if this is a spot where I need to use some food or waste some time. I'm okay with that. Actually, we could probably put regenerate on the whole time, like rapid heal. Debilitate would actually go hard here. It'd be really, really good. 55. What's my defense? 52. Oh no. You know what? I'm just going to train defense to 55. I just didn't realize that that's when you get debilitate and debilitate is really, really nice here. Okay. Also remember, there are only 30 waves. So like wave four is like actually kind of okay. I can't remember how to shake these ones loose. I remember. Got it. Big day. The one thing that I'm a little nervous about is just the prayer upkeep is pretty bad. Like I'm upkeeping my prayer on penance, but then I'm not healing anything because I'm on penance. And I'm just not certain of that. Let me rest for a second. I just want to see what the HP heal per minute is. It's actually not terrible. I would just rather not have to do this. Well, we definitely should be patient in the sense that like, I don't want to go into a wave on no HP. So I think we should do some thinking. Do you think I have enough prayer to just run overheads? And then if I run overheads, do I pop vampirism? I think it's too early because that's like a decision I'll be stuck with. Bro hit me at 24 when I res. 
I have actually gained 2,000 HP just sitting here. That's not terrible. Bro, hit me a three. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a really easy wave. Stop meleeing me! I think the last wave was just bad. I think this wave's fine. Awesome. Okay, yeah, we're fine. We're all good. We're all good. Okay, so in a sec here, we're going to have wave six done. By the way, if you're wondering why I cancel my asphyxiate early, it's because only the first three hits of asphyxiate stun. So the longest stun you can get is to asphyxiate and then impact and then deep impact. I think I'm going to get better too over time. Like here, this is a really good point to stun because I do my stun rotation and then coming out of it, I can use devotion again. And that way we've done this whole wave without really losing much HP. All right, we're on to the second terror bird. <laughs> I am also noticing like the only parts of this that are bad are when there are two combat styles attacking me at once. Every other circumstance feels kind of fine. Oh, look, there's only one attacking me. He's done it. Whoever made this encounter is rude, to be honest. I'm gonna get some HP back really quick. Waves 20 to 30 are, f are mostly free. One, two, one, two, got it. Okay, cool. See, it's little stuff like that where you just need to like remember what the lure is. Now we're good. All we're trying to do there is stagger them so that they, yeah. I don't know why I thought just like randomly running that way would work. In hindsight, kind of a stupid idea. Next up, we've got Jad. And Jad is a free wave, by the way. All right, I'm honestly just so glad we're out of the first 10 waves. They sucked. You know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tank a Jad hit for prayer points in a second. Okay, I'm tanking a Jad hit now. Nice. Just because it makes the prayer points free, you may as well. Uh, wave 11 is just four mages, one on each corner. So wave 11 is really easy. 10 waves down, 44 minutes in, um, 53 deaths. So two more death levels and we unlock debilitate. If we unlock debilitate, life is going to be good. Wave 12 is a constitution crystal. These are kind of useless, but we can kind of meme around with them. So I'm going to grab it just for memes. And then it's two rangers, two mages, and that's it. So this is another really easy wave. Honestly, feel like we've needed this. We've needed a couple good waves. And once again, as soon as you get to 20, it gets way, way easier. Yeah, and the other thing too is I'm only down to nine food remaining, so we do need to be a little bit careful of that. I don't want to be taking too many risks, but yeah, these waves are a lot easier, so that's really good. Okay, Constitution Crystal. I'm doing a thing. I'm swapping the Vampirism. I'm not trying to upkeep an astronomical amount of HP. I don't need that much. I just, I need more than I'm currently getting. Because especially if I do a Stun Rod, I, I'm not taking that much damage. Also, the best ability to use with Vamp is uh, Bleeds. Bleeds with Vamp always heal more. These guys go ham. That's crazy. All right. I'm glad the Rangers don't do any damage. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of saving me a bit. This next set of waves is unironically a lot easier. Wait, look at that. Okay. So with the right rotation in Devo, I can actually kill that guy without taking any hits. That's really good to know. Why don't we just do that same rod again on this guy? Good news is that we are banking in vulnerability crystals, and that's really good because the high 30s we can use in vulnerability crystals to make them easier. All right, that's Terror Bird number three. Yeah, another easy wave. Also, probably a good time to mention, Prayer Flicking in RuneScape 3, it's the opposite of old school. So it's not on cast, it's when it connects with you is when the damage is calculated. I think I can just attack bro from here. Great, let's look at wave 17. Uh, wave 17 is also easy. It's all one at a time. You know what I think is going to save this run? Unlocking debilitate in the middle of the run. Okay, we're moving faster. Our pace is getting better, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Get in the hole. I really thought the kiln was going to take me an hour. I might be an idiot. Wave 18 is not nice at all. It's actually ridiculously rude. 54 defense. One more level till I get debilitate. I did not just resonate a four, dude. I might even pop a food. Yup. <laughs> He's popping a mini. This wave is nine different mages and a dill. Guys, we're over halfway though. Wait, is there a version of this where I don't just get absolutely blasted? I I may have messed up. I'm definitely going elsewhere. I think this will work actually. I'm fine. Everything's good. I think we can do this as long as I'm really well positioned. I think we can do this. I just, I need to, I need to really use my brain later on. All right, there's 29 on to wave 21. And now these, these are the easy waves. Also, I'm switching to ice burst for these waves. Yeah, so all these guys are weak to water spells and that means I can do way more damage and then way more damage means vamp heals me way more. So we're gonna actually fly through a lot of these waves. Yeah, and the meleeers are like, they're really, really stupid. They just get blocked really, really easily. Look at me, dude, I'm full HP without the blood spells, just using vamp. It's really, really fun from like a problem solving standpoint because you get rangers and mages mixed in with the melee 
I have found the best solution for a lot of these waves is really, really funny because it absolutely would not work if this arena came out recently. But the way that this works is I'm going to grab the crystal. The ranger spawns all the way up here. So I'm actually just going to stand here and the ranger should just block every single melee from being able to attack me. Yeah, now we're into the fun stuff. Okay, now I Devo. There's the Deto. And now just to save prayer, I'm going to get them all stuck, I think. And they're all stuck. All right, next wave is two rangers and there's a mage on the opposite side. This time, I think if I stand here, I can reach, but this might be bad. Oh yeah, it's like this. Yeah, I got it. Woo! Oh no. He lives! Woo! It's fine. I think I'm supposed to stand up there. Yeah. That is 55 defense. Let's go! Okay, this is huge. I can now use debilitate, finally! Let me get debilitate, let me get her on a bar, and then we're gonna have a good old time. Man, I really, really, really needed this. <laughs> and now I have debilitate, also known as an extremely good defensive ability. That wave kind of scared me a bit because I was feeling very confident, and now I'm feeling very freaked out. I also have three invulnerability crystals, which is good. Oh god, it's fine. Okay, arguably that's not bad. I mean, you could also argue that it's not good, but... All right, I know what movement I'm doing. I've got it. They get it. Let's go! The movement! Res? Look at that res! Wait, these meleers hit like a bus. That's beautiful. Awesome. All right, what's wave 27? All right, I'm full HP. Let's go. Wait, it's perfect. They're all stuck. I will say, we've definitely picked up the pace since the beginning. Like, the first 10 waves were terrible. They're putting me to sleep, but we're doing well now. Okay, we've made it to the Dill wave. For the Dills, you need to be able to attack them with a pickaxe to break their armor. But ever since RuneScape got the tool belt update, you can now use any melee weapon and it acts as though you're using a pickaxe. But there's one other interesting mechanic with these Dills. They take a number of hits to break their armor, but if you use a bleed that hits multiple times, every single hit of that bleed is gonna count as a hit from the pickaxe. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run in, I'm gonna cast a bleed, and then I'm gonna run back out of range so that I'm not taking any damage while the bleed slowly ticks down and deals with the Dills armor. Once the armor is broken, I can put on my magic gear and finish them off nice and easy. And now we do the same thing on this one where only this one should be able to see me. The others will not be able to. That's why we do them one at a time, by the way. They can all individually drop the ceiling on you. And when they do that, you just die. So we don't want that. Okay, one more. The last one's chill. We're fine on the last one. Wait, I can't pray though. If you pray, they... Oh God, okay. All right, wave 30, final stretch team. It might be time to zealots and just rip prayer potions as well, by the way. A Jad spawning south. So I think if I stand opposite the Jad, I should be safe. The Jads are just a little scary because they can melee you if you lure them wrong. And then if you do, they just one shot you. And for these later waves, like there's no way to lure them like really well. You just need to be really good and hit really hard. Also kind of nice, but I'm going to come out of this with a full amount of food. And that's really, really solid to be honest with you. Honestly, I'm good on supplies. <laughs> Somehow, even after the really, really rough start, I feel like I'm good on supplies. See, this isn't good. You would concur that this is not good, right? <sighs> this one's easy, it's just melee's. So this wave is fine. Okay, so I stand here, I don't move. That worked, beautiful, cool. Oh my God, dude, this cutscene is gonna take all my adren. Build. Okay, I'm good. Here we go. We're into the finale now. The Jad is not meleeing me, which is good. No, it's the next wave that's really bad. This wave is fine. Here we go. Hardest wave in the whole thing. So it's like a game of chicken. I do not move. I just flick the Jad. Do not move. Do not move. Just flick the Jad. I got it. Let's go, dude. Just need a prayer flick well. See, so yeah, next wave is the double Jad. Okay, sweet. Bro, I friggin' don't like this, man. I would assume I step here, diagonal, because I step in a melee distance, I get melee. I don't want to do that. I'm assuming. Why don't I pop a crystal? Just because I'm not 100% sure. Can he melee me from here? Yeah, it looks like he can't. Okay, very nice. Once again, though, this is what the crystal's for. Like, I mean, I could also just melee flick him, but I'd rather not. All right, we've made it to our hacking. I will say, the bad is not done yet. I don't have any aura resets. This is all the prayer I have. Harakin is going to take a long time to kill. 
I have 300 charges left. Um, so there are like two different ways of doing this. The first way you do it is you don't kill these at all. You just ignore them and then they hit their spawn cap. But if that happens, your kill takes a lot longer. He can spawn in an area that's not um, habitable and then you just need to wait and wait and wait forever. And that's really bad. So I would rather do it like this. Kraken's here. Oh my God, dude, I've got no deeps, bro. Oh, shit. see this? This is really bad. This actually sucks. We've just got really bad spawns. Eat. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like 10 of them. Oh my God. Stop. No, I might, I'm going to fail this. I think. Wait, I unironically, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, I can't, I can't attack up there. Oh, dude, I don't want to lose this. Okay, I just need to really, really think here. I need to use my thinking brain. I do have immortality. Immortality is a really good heal too. So that is one mage and one range, so I can't go there. That is one mage and one range, so I can't go there either. I do have an invulnerability crystal. That's true. I can pop an invuln if I need to. Okay, Harakin's here. Kill the ranger and then get on big guy. There's a mage tentacle that is currently meleeing me. Really, really annoyingly, to be honest. There's the Immort. Take off the prayer. Pop the Immort. Hit me. Hit me, please. Please hit me. Please hit me! I need it to hit me. Big. Oh god. Get out. Oh my god! That's crystal. What in the ever flying? What is that? That might be the worst spawn in history. That's so freaking annoying, dude. Get out quickly. Res. Oh my god, they're hitting on on cycle. That's two on top of each other. Oh no. Uh, where do I go? This way, maybe. Um, okay. I've never had this much trouble with spawns. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's possible it's clutchable. I'm just like, I'm really, really struggling with my spawns so far. They've just been really unlucky. See, that's three stacked up. That's what kind of caught me out last time. Okay, so that's my best spot to go. If I need to go somewhere, I go there. Okay. See, that was an okay cycle. I actually gained life points on that. That's good. That's what we need. Well, I don't know if I gained life points, but I didn't lose all my life points. And I've got a ward again, so that's good too. I'm okay. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Perfect. That's all I needed. Great. Can that guy hit me? Oh no. That's actually a disaster spawn. Uh-oh. This is the end, I think. Yeah, we're done. Oh, dude, I just, look at how spread out they are. Uh, like, I swear, I just got the literal worst spawns in the universe. Okay, so that didn't go very well. I got absolutely blasted by the tentacles, and I feel like we had really, really bad luck with spawns, and they were spawning all over me, but still. It's not like we died with the boss at 30,000 life points. Harakin is healthy, and that means we aren't nearly strong enough. So why don't we fix that before we run it back? It sucks dying to something that I really felt like I'd be able to do, but we're clearly just not there yet. I don't even feel bad or like there is any kind of skill ability there that could have made it work. We just don't have the stats or the gear to make this work. So I'm going to regroup, and I'm going to make some upgrades. To get started, let's go back to the Arch Glacier with the group to make some GP, and also to detilt just a little bit. If we get a Wen book, this entire kiln run is going to be free. And if we don't, money is money and money is still good. And so are the charms. Oh she my god, she put on wings. She put the wings on, but then instantly died. I'm but I'd you, they make you bad, brother. Camp camping range prayer. Yep. Surely this is the something. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh my god. No! Oh no, that's so actually no. so unlucky. That's the same drop rate as the wind book. Oh no. Oh no. What is it out for? Asking for a friend. Honestly, like, if it elks for a mill, I'm eating it. Yeah, it's, it's so untradeable. You can't even elk it.
Unfortunately, that Lang artifact, which has the exact same drop rate as the one book, is completely useless to me at this point. I can't even do anything with it until I'm level 90 runecrafting, and at 90 runecrafting, all it gives me is a slight upgrade to a pair of gloves. But now it's back to bandits for me to continue training magic. By the way, if you're looking to do this method and you don't have a Zamorak or Sardoman item, here are some really easy ones you can get. This is surprisingly good combat experience. It's pretty AFK, and hopefully it doesn't take too long to get what I need. My stats were definitely not up to par for that kiln run, so why don't we fix that? That is level 80 magic coming in. Hopefully that's enough to give us a little bit of a better shot. I also don't think my mystic gear is remotely appropriate for the fight kiln, but there aren't a ton of better options. One interesting idea though, is to get a set of skeletal armor, which actually has lower defense than mystic, but it also has a lot more power bonus, which is gonna make me do more damage. And I'm hoping in this instance that the best defense might just be a good offense. If I'm able to clear the tentacles faster, I might just have an easier time reducing the overall damage that I take. You can get a set of Skeletal by killing Wallasakis in the Waterbirth Dungeon. The Wallasakis will drop Skeletal pieces, and then you can give those pieces with some Dagonoth Hide that I got from Dagonoth Rex to an NPC in Relica who will make the armor for me. Oh, that's a Skull Piece! Okay, so the Skull Piece, I believe, is the Skeletal Helmet we can now make. Okay, awesome. Wait, I got the Rip Cage! Let's go! Okay, so the Rip Cage should be the Plate Body, right? So now all I need is the Fibula Piece, and then I've got full Skeletal. Minus the boots that we can all agree we don't care about. Oh, skeletal boots! Oh no, there's another skull piece! Where's the fibula at? Fibula piece! All right, that's full skeletal done. Let's get out of here, man. We do this. I need Dagonoth hide. I need six of them. And then we need to talk to... I think it's Pier the Seer in the Fremenic province. Wallasalki bone armor. Could you take me to the bone zone? I can't say that. There we go. That is some sturdy body armor. And that is a beautiful set of powerful leg armor. All right, let's throw on the new armor. Let's see what the look is. Oh my God. Wait, okay, the helmet's kind of sick though. Now that I've got a full set of skeletal, I'm gonna spend a bit of time in the wilderness. Every monster in the wildy has the chance to hit a special wilderness drop table, and I'm gunning for a Fremenic equipment patch. They're a little bit rare, so I may not get one here, but every one I get is gonna let me upgrade a piece of my skeletal gear by 10 tiers. I'm not committing to this plan, but I'll happily send some revenants for a few hours and see if we get lucky. All right, I do think one of these invents we should get a drop though. Like we're, we're at the point of getting, oh, what is that? A deployable herb burner? Bro, I'm risking my life at revs and they gave me a vape? Imagine how much, I already sound like this. Imagine how much worse it would be. What if I get a piece of ancient warrior's equipment? That is level 66 defense. Shout out to Revenants. Jacqueline. No, it has to be. Oh! <laughs> a corrupt dragon full helm. Surely Pup uses that. It's power armor. That is 70 constitution coming in. We got it from Revs. That's crazy. Means we actually have access to Zamorok's fortress in the God Wars dungeon. What? A corrupt dragon longsword. Oh no. Okay, we're not getting the drops that we need. We're getting the opposite. Oh, Morgan's pants. Wait, no way. Yo man is gonna be fired up. Those are tier 78 pants that upgrade to tier 88 and they're power tier. That is level 67 defense. Three more levels until we can wear tier 70s. Unfortunately, I've completely struck out in the wilderness. I got some good XP and some good levels from this, but unfortunately, I didn't get a single Fremenic equipment patch, so this idea is kind of dead. But on the bright side, while I was in the wilderness, I did kill 144 Hellhounds, and that is a requirement for the succession quest, which is something that I want to do pretty soon in the next few days, so it wasn't a complete waste. There's one more thing I might be able to do to improve my armor setup. So why don't we head to Zamorak God Wars for the first time and try to get some subjugation robes. I have no idea how God Wars is gonna go with this setup, but hopefully we can get in there and get some drops. Subjugation gear is tier 70 power armor, so it's absolutely perfect for this. It's basically a combination of skeletal, which is power gear, and mystic, which is tank gear, but it has even better stats than both combined. But unfortunately, earlier in this video, I promised that the next time I had to run up Trollheim Mountain, I would do the Edgar's Ruse quest, which unlocks the teleport to Trollheim. Next time we go to God Wars, I will do the Edgar's Ruse quest, and then we can teleport. So let's get that quest done, because I am nothing if not a man of my word. So now I'm picking wheat. I went from the pinnacle of PVM to picking wheat. Oh no. Quickly! I think burnt meat's down here, right? Hello, burnt meat. Burnt meat, my beloved. What? I will say too, this doesn't even make killing the God Wars generals easier. Because if you kill Zami once, you unlock the portal anyway. 
And then we like we could have just run up this mountain once and then unlock the portal. So I am doing this purely because I said I would. It is actually almost in no way efficient. Now. I'm insane! I'm actually a god. All right, I'm gonna get a second one. While we're here and while we're god gaming, I may as well get two. I mean, I'll go three for three. If y'all wanna see the record, I'll go three for three. Bang, get 28 to assert dominance. That is the Edgar's Ruse quest complete. So now I can finally teleport to the top of the mountain that I just finished running up and down 10 times. Even getting Zami kill count was 160k an hour, by the way. So it seems like everything, no matter what you do, is at very, very minimum 150k an hour. Am I in charge of Ryan's stream now? No. I know no one cares, but that is a succession quest completed. In RuneScape 3, there's a method that works at some of the older bosses called kiting, where instead of letting the boss hit me, I can continually run around the room while attacking. In this instance, Krill is going to be running around me the entire time trying to reach me, but he won't ever make it to me if I run correctly. It's very click intensive, but if I want to do a proper God Wars strip, I think this is the only way I'm going to be able to do that with these stats in this setup. All right. Um, that's a I killed the kill. boss. 43 seconds. Yeah, oh, we can Jonah. definitely go faster than that. Ooh. Uh, I'm about to PR, I think. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. It's not a 30 bad. second spawn time. So, 36, 36 now. Yeah. Let's okay. Go. I'm just really, really scared about the. Like, the minions are kind of bodying me, so I will need to bank for food. I need a little more upkeep than I'm getting, I think. I got huge salvage. Pretty huge, to be fair. I got an elite clue. <gasps> what is that? Oh, it's War Priest, brother. I did get an elite clue though. That's exciting. You're having a Zami themed wedding? Of course. Wait, really? Oh, War Priest of Zamorak Cape. Dude, I keep seeing these beams and freaking out, and it's always War Priest. I need to stop. Mm hmm. I got yeah, a God I, Sword I... Shard. Oh. From a let's minion. Go. Let's we go. We get you your, uh, your AGS. Oh, I'm about to AGS so much. Bro is not poisoning me. Oh! Dude, are you kidding me? That's collection log progress? Oh my god, I'm getting trolled. That's actually the worst. Do you want to stop? Oh my god. Oh work? my god! No way! Oh. <laughs> Let's go! Brother. Hood of Brother. subjugation! A subjugation hood isn't the best, but it's absolutely better than nothing. Compared to the skeletal, it's got way better stats, and I'm hoping that that, combined with me being higher level, is gonna be enough for me to get the kiln done. <gasps> oh, I almost died. That was terrible. Ooh, I got a Zami hilt! <laughs> Bro, pup, you're gonna Why have a Zamrock Godsword. That is 81 magic coming in. Not bad at all. I can now use unboosted air surge. There's one other massive upgrade that I've got up my sleeve. If I can complete the World Wakes quest, I'm gonna unlock the Sunshine ability, which is the single strongest magic ultimate ability in RuneScape. It's gonna boost my damage dealt for 30 seconds, and it also applies a bleed to my target. But there's just one issue. Last time I did the World Wakes quest, I died. On my hardcore Iron Man, just about three years ago. This quest is absolutely terrifying, and if I die again, there is no way I'm gonna be able to live it down. I have no memory of this quest. All I know about it is that it is absolutely iconic. 40 key life points, and I have 30% hit chance. Brother, this is not good. Move, oh, dodge. Oh God, it's chasing me. Wait, it's actually chasing me. Wait, I didn't know they could do that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Help. One more hit. One more hit. One more hit. Big. That was terrible. This is hurting my brain. You cannot teleport out while you're in the past. This fun fact got added to the wiki after I lost my hardcore with a ring of life while I was spamming teleport. If you guys are wondering, why do they look like this? Wait, they're not fire anymore? Wait, what happened? Did the fire... <laughs> did the fireballs turn in... When did they become spirit balls? How did I lose a hardcore during this, dude? It is literally so easy. You just wait for the balls to go, and then you go after them, and then the next set of balls does even come... How is it possible that I was able to die here? Like, quite literally. <laughs> Maybe it got nerfed. That's actually probably what it was. It probably got nerfed right after. Bible thump in the chat for poor Guthix. God of balance? Have you tried balancing your life points so they don't hit zero? 
Actually, I shouldn't disuse my Guthix. I know none of this is going to end up in a video because editor Nathan loves Guthix. He will unironically, I'm going to get a message about it. He's going to DM me and be like, he might quit. Yeah, just like Guthix quit on being alive during this quest. I was informed of your mean language about my king. Wait, who snitched? Wait, 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 who snitched? That is the while, wait, not the while Guthix sleeps quest complete. The world wakes quest complete. Three quest points, getting us up to 176 total. A lot of these lamps I actually can't use yet. Uh, we have to save them for like Herbler later on. Honestly, really, really cool quest. Uh, nothing noteworthy happened. Nobody important died. With the World Wakes quest complete, I'm finally ready to go back to the kiln. And I think I'm ready for redemption. My armor's better, my stats are higher, I've got better strategies, and I've got the sunshine ability unlocked. So in the next episode, I'm going back into the kiln, and I'm not leaving without that cape. Now it's time for the recaps. Legos did a couple big quests, including Dragon Slayer and One Small Favor, and then spent a bunch of time training combat, going from 52 all the way to level 66 Necromancy. He also crafted tier 60 Necromancy weapons, so he's almost ready to start dealing a ton of damage and getting into PVM. Yo Man spent most of his time skilling and questing. Also completed Dragon Slayer, he also gathered the supplies to make a set of Spined Armor, which is pretty low tier, but it is power gear and it should give him some good damage in the early game. Bunny Bop reached 100 quest points and also unlocked the tier 40 Necromancy armor. She also did some combat training in Shattered Worlds and completed the Easy Underworld Achievement Diary to unlock the Tome of Um, which has some pretty good stats and some handy teleports. Last but not least, Pup completed Evil Dave's Big Day Out and then did lots of solo dungeoneering, just because he could and he wanted to. On top of that, most importantly, he also completed the Succession Quest, which unlocks the Dive Ability, which is awesome for mobility and for getting around. Especially as a meleeer, it's a really, really strong ability, and it was a huge push to get the stats and the requirements for this quest, because it requires 40 Divination, 40 Archaeology, 60 Mining, and 60 Smithing to complete. With the recaps out of the way, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. 